Attention, public service announcement. If you have been loving my videos, if you like the content I provide, if you think I should create more videos, please subscribe to my channel, click that subscribe button and like my videos. Every like, every subscribe is a great encouragement for me. I have 150 subscribers right now. I would love to have 200. I think I can achieve that very soon. Thank you so much. Would you like to do Salesforce development on IntelliJ, but don't know how to get started, how to set it up? I'd like to give you a short tutorial on how to do so. So let's get started. Here I'm starting IntelliJ. I'll show you how to get the two great Salesforce extensions on IntelliJ. Just click Configure, Plugins. Here, just put in JetForcer. This one, yeah. The plugin, JetForcer. You get a free 30-day trial. You click here and it'll install. The other one is uh, Repositories. That's it. Illuminate Cloud. Then you click install, and I've already installed it, that's why I don't see the button here, but here, illuminate, there's Illuminate Cloud 1 and Illuminate Cloud 2. I installed Illuminate Cloud 2, so once you've done so, you got the two Salesforce plugins. So, I got them both. Let's start a Salesforce project. Click here. Here's the JetForcer plugin. This is the Illuminate, Illuminate Cloud plugin. Uh, you can retrieve an existing project or start with an empty project. I'll show you how to retrieve an existing project. You click here. So let's say I want to... I have a production or a development org and I want to work on that org through IntelliJ. So I need to get my username. So here's my username. I put in my password. I don't need to put in a token because I put the IP range for the profile. From 0, 0, 0 to 255 to 55. So whenever if you do this, you don't need to, to use tokens. So I do this whenever it's not a production or like highly sensitive work. If it's an org just for development purposes, this is totally fine. So I don't put a token. Test the connection. Connection successful. I click OK. Now I can retrieve all the Apex classes and everything else related to this org. I can retrieve everything or just s select the things I need, I want to work on. For example, here everything is selected, but maybe I don't need the visual force babies, maybe I don't need the flows, etc. But let's assume we need everything. Here we can give it a name. Where do you want to store the file? Let's finish it. Test. All right, and here's my org. Uh, here's my project, which I call test. So it's retrieving all the files from Salesforce. So everything that retrieved, I go down to the source. Here are the classes. I only have one class, I can open it. And here it is. If I want to create a new Apex class, I right click, go new, and Apex class. YouTube. And here's the class. Uh, 
All right, I saved it. Let's see it. Check the event log. Retrieved. All right, let's go to the org. It was called YouTube, right? So it's not here yet. As we could see, the file was not there. So what we had to do was deploy YouTube class. So I so let's deploy. I'll go here and here it is. Just got deployed. So that was my video on how to set up IntelliJ for Salesforce development. We can make use of these two great plugins two called Illuminate Cloud great. and JetForce. And you might want to do that in case you don't want to use Dev Console or <laughs> Eclipse for your Salesforce development. Next, okay. I'd like to prepare a video on how to integrate your Salesforce org using IntelliJ with oh. GitHub.